Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias a todos y a todas. Y muy buenos días. Voy, voy a hacer esta ponencia en inglés. No porque sea mi idioma favorito. Sino para facilitar que personas que no hablen español tengan acceso a mis palabras. Honorable members of the United Nations Special Committee on Decolonization, it is a great honor for me to be able to stand before you and to express my heartfelt gratitude for every resolution this August body has passed supporting Puerto Rico, right to be an independent and sovereign nation, and the excarceration of the Puerto Rican political prisoners. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the Venezuelan citizens and their president, Hugo Chavez Frias, and President Nicolás Maduro, President Daniel Ortega, and the citizens of Nicaragua, President Evo Morales, and the citizens of the plurinational state of Bolivia, President Jose Pepe Mujica and President Tavares Vasquez and the citizens of Uruguay, President Rafael Correa and President Lenin Moreno and the citizens of Ecuador, President Fidel Castro Ruz and President Raul Castro Ruz, the five Cuban heroes, Gonzalez, René González, Gerardo Hernández, Ramón Lavañino, Antonio Guerrero, and Fernández González Jort, and the citizens of Cuba for the support they have given me and for the support they have given the just and noble cause of my beloved Puerto Rico and of our right to be an independent and sovereign nation and to be part of the community of nations. On the 17th of May of this year, I was finally excarcerated. Had it been on the 29th of May, I would have been in prison for 36 years, almost half of my life. During those years, the resolutions that this honorable committee passed were always fountain of hope and strength for me. I would, I would read them, and I would find in them precious expressions of solidarity and compassion, and it would make me feel the same day, the same day Puerto Rico will be decolonized, that someday Puerto Rico will be decolonized and a free and sovereign nation like the ones you represent here. I have spent five decades serving what I believe is the most just and noble cause any Puerto Rican citizen can serve. During, during it has been, yes, been an act of love and fulfilling my duty as a citizen, as a Puerto Rican citizen. And because I believe that when one serves a just and noble cause, it is never a sacrifice, even if it means giving one's life during it, or doing it. I say this to let people know that for me, serving a just and noble cause has been the most liberating experience I have had, and that in spite of all the horrible things done to me during the years I spent in prison, I have come home with my head, my head high and my honor my dignity and my spirit stronger than the day I was sent to prison. Thanks to the support this committee has given to the Puerto Rican political prisoners and the support of hundreds of thousands of freedom and justice loving people of Puerto Rico, of the Puerto Rican diaspora, and of many nations in the world, there are no more Puerto Rican political prisoners in the gulags of the United States government. Unfortunately, There are many other political prisoners inside the prisons of the industrial complex of the United States of America. And there's one, there's one Puerto Rican woman. Uh, excuse me. Ana Belén Montes, 
who chose to serve a just and noble cause and go to prison rather than to do the dirty work of the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. She is serving a 25 year sentence and battling cancer. But according to the United States government, there aren't any political prisoners in the United States of America. While the United States government alleges there are no political prisoners in its gulags or terrorists on, the, on, on its payroll, it claims there are many other countries with many other countries it doesn't like. I found it interesting that its partner in crime in Puerto Rico condemned me for speaking with President Maduro the day I was released from prison and asking him to release and for not asking him to release the prisoners in Venezuela. They consider it to be political prisoners. I am certain that the prisoners the U.S. government considers to be political prisoners would never entertain the idea of asking the United States government to release all the political prisoners in the U.S. and in Guantanamo. And much less would they ask the United States to bring to justice the terrorists on its payroll who have killed independentistas in Puerto Rico or to stop practicing the crime of colonialism and allow the Puerto Rican people to exercise their, our inalienable right of self-determination and allow Puerto Rico to be an independent and sovereign nation. What has U.S. colonialism done to Puerto Rico and to the Puerto Rican people? Allow me to share with you some of the most deleterious problems caused by colonialism in Puerto Rico that I have observed since my arrival in my homeland. Today, there are over 5 million Puerto Ricans living in the diaspora, while there are less than 3.5 million Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico. I found a Puerto Rico under the control of a fiscal control board imposed by the United States government that has the power to dictate to the colonialists who help to administer the colony what to do, especially when dealing with the payment of the $72 billion debt Puerto Rico owes to the banks and the hedge funds. And I will have seen, and I have seen, an accelerated gentrification process constructing condominiums costing $1 million or more. And I would like to emphasize this point of gentrification. Since the United States government arrived in Puerto Rico in 1898, one of its goals has been to, to depopulate Puerto Rico. The first wave, the first wave that the United States government tried to impose on Puerto Ricans was in 1900, early 1900, and Puerto Ricans were sent as far away as Hawaii and to the southwest states in the United States. The second wave, the second wave of the population was put together after World War II and a couple of billions of Puerto Ricans ended up settling in the United States. The third wave, the third wave of the population started around the uh, year 2000, and over a million Puerto Ricans have been removed from Puerto Rico. They have been removed from Puerto Rico because there are no jobs in Puerto Rico. These are young professionals. These are young Puerto Ricans who represent the future of Puerto Rico, and I believe that the population of Puerto Rico is a move to get as many Puerto Ricans out of Puerto Rico as possible without, without allowing us to enjoy, to enjoy our homeland. Puerto Rico today is under the threat, under the threat of, being, of becoming not the nation of Puerto Ricans, but a nation not of ours.
I would like for you to think and to imagine if such a loss of population was occurring in your countries, any country that has lost two of almost two thirds of its population, including its best its best developed human resource, cannot see itself having a strong economy and good quality of life for its citizens. And in Puerto Rico, we are starting to see the negative effects of the loss of the last wave of immigrants. We are already seeing a larger aging population that is becoming poorer and poorer and with less medical and social services available to them. The future of them looks bleak and at the same time, young people of reproductive age are leaving Puerto Rico in mass and more foreigners are buying the expensive condominiums or living in enclosed upper class communities in Puerto Rico. If the displacement, if the displacement of the population of Puerto Rico is an alarming problem, what the Fiscal Control Board is making the colonialist administration do in Puerto Rico is more worrisome. For starters, by August, 169 schools will be closed in Puerto Rico. Teachers will be losing their jobs, and communities, especially the poorer ones, will be losing their schools. Behind, behind this scene, the colonialists are pushing more and more their privatization problems. They aren't satisfied that the privatization of Puerto Rico has played a major role in bringing the economy to its worst conditions in Puerto Rico's history. But besides losing 169 schools, it is threatening the future of the University of Puerto Rico. The goal of the Fiscal Control Board is to take away close to half a billion dollars from the university's budget. At the same time, it is looking for ways to raise the tuition and to force the University of Puerto Rico to close down close some of its 11 campuses and to sell much of its property, especially land that, is, that has been used for experiments in the past. What the Fiscal Control Board seems to be doing is trying to privatize the University of Puerto Rico. All the money that will be taken away from the public education system will be used as payment to fill the coffers of the banks and the hedge funds. While Puerto Ricans will be poorer and more destitute, the colonialists and the banking industry will become richer. Thus, Puerto Rico is being made poorer and poorer and at the same time depopulated of its native population. In spite of the fact that, that the future of Puerto Rico looks bleak, many Puerto Ricans believe that this is the best moment to wage an effective decolonization process. We know that the majority of Puerto Ricans have Puerto Rico, love Puerto Rico, our national, our, our national identity, we love our national identity, we love our culture, we love our language, and our, our, our origins. We see the potential that Puerto Rico has to become a strong nation and an asset to the economy of the Caribbean and Latin American countries. We have the human resources and the other basic resources to transform Puerto Rico into the Edenic garden that it has the potential of being. Because this is, a, this is such a moment. We are asking this committee to take the issue of the decolonization of Puerto Rico to the General Assembly and to ask it to fulfill its responsibility to bring to an end the colonization of Puerto Rico by the United States government. Colonialism is a crime against humanity. It is, 
If the United States government is the nation of laws that it claims to be, then it behooves it to the colonized Puerto Rico by adhering to the tenets of international law that prohibit the crime of colonialism. I hope you will do whatever you can to bring to an end the colonial status of Puerto Rico and to allow us to be part of the community of nations. I want, I want to take, quiero tomar este momento y, y, y expandirlo un poquito más. Uh, estoy, estoy leyendo algo en inglés y, y la verdad es que tengo un problemita con los ojos, pero, pero quiero hacer algo bien, bien claro. Puerto Rico hoy día está bien, bien amenazado, amenazado por la privatización que se está llevando a cabo en Puerto Rico. Por, por todo por todo lo que está haciendo una junta de control fiscal criminal que verdaderamente tiene las intenciones y la única y el único propósito de sacarle hasta el último centavo que está en el bolsillo de cada boricua y de cada y de cada de cada puertorriqueño en la diáspora si pudiese es, es una meta, es una meta criminal, es una meta, si, de, si la despoblación, despoblación de Puerto Rico que se está llevando a cabo hoy día se logra por, por el gobierno estadounidense, nosotros los puertorriqueños estaríamos perdiendo nuestra, nuestra patria, estaríamos perdiendo nuestra identidad, nuestra cultura, nuestro idioma y todo lo que nos hace puertorriqueños y puertorriqueñas. Y esto es un, esto es un momento bien, bien, bien serio. Es un momento que exige, que exige que todo ser humano que ame la justicia y la libertad, que verdaderamente tome una posición fija con el caso de Puerto Rico, que miren lo que está pasando en Puerto Rico objetivamente, que miren que, que nosotros los puertorriqueños, donde quiera que estamos, donde quiera que estamos, amamos a Puerto Rico, sea en Estados Unidos, sea donde se sea, pero sí amamos a nuestra patria y queremos, queremos a un Puerto Rico digno de nuestro pueblo, queremos un Puerto Rico que verdaderamente pueda integrarse a los países del Caribe, pueda integrarse a los países latinoamericanos y también ser parte de la comunidad del mundo. Necesitamos, este es un momento, este es un momento que necesitamos muchísima, muchísima ayuda. También me gustaría pedirle a este comité que tome en consideración, tome en consideración lo que está pasando dentro, dentro de este país, porque dentro de este país el futuro del de mundo entero, del mundo entero, está está en sus manos. Dentro de este país están pasando cosas que verdaderamente afectan a todo el mundo. La injerencia, la injerencia de Estados Unidos en nuestros países, en nuestros países, es el peor problema que nosotros tenemos. Necesitamos, necesitamos que verdaderamente veamos o nos veamos como las personas, las personas que verdaderamente tenemos el potencial de hacer lo que es necesario hacer. Pero si permitimos, si permitimos que Estados Unidos continúe con su injerencia, que, que pueda dictarle, por ejemplo, al pueblo cubano lo que Cuba tiene que ser, o al pueblo venezolano lo que el pueblo venezolano tiene que ser, o a, o a, o a Nicaragua y al pueblo nicaragüense lo que tiene que hacer, a Costa Rica, a Ecuador, a, a, a Bolivia a todos los países latinoamericanos, dictarle, dictarle lo que quiere hacer. Estamos mal, estamos mal. Hay temprano, temprano en la década de los 80, el presidente, el presidente Fidel Castro Ruz le hizo una advertencia a los países latinoamericanos, le pidió que no pagaran la deuda externa, porque verdaderamente, verdaderamente, irían, continuarían saqueando, saqueando y saqueando a nuestros países. Ningún país latinoamericano en aquel momento le hizo caso. Quizás, quizás después de eso, unos cuantos países han podido, han podido hacer y tener logros. Por ejemplo, 
el presidente Hugo Chávez Frías hizo, hizo en Venezuela algo bien, bien positivo. El presidente Evo Morales en Bolivia hizo algo, algo bien positivo. El presidente Correa hizo algo, algo bien positivo en Ecuador. En, en Nicaragua, Daniel Ortega hizo algo, algo bien positivo. Y el pueblo, y estos son trabajos también, no solamente de un presidente, sino de esos pueblos. Y nosotros necesitamos más y más ese, esa, ese, tipo, de, ese tipo de enfoque, ese tipo de lucha. Así que exhorto a todos, a todos los que puedan luchar, que luchemos por un mundo mejor y más justo. Gracias a todos.